Well, hello there. How is everyone? I hope you are all well on this fantabulous, fantabulous Saturday morning. It's Saturday morning, baby. Smash that like button or I'll smash you. <laughs> I think I think the clocks go forward tonight in the UK, for those of you who are interested in that. I think that's right. Anyway, like the early hours of tomorrow morning, like two o'clock in the morning or something. So you lose, you lose an hour's sleep. Yeah, lose an hour's sleep. That sucks, doesn't it? Now, I've got chat up on the second screen today. Thank Lord, thank the Lord. We're back. We're back. Fully appled out again. I tried to go to Windows. Oh, I ain't doing that again. Not doing it ever again. Not doing it ever again. Matt, 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 Matt. Let me, when I lift that, let me just sort these out so we can see them a bit better. So Matt is heading out to Nashville tomorrow to dive in, literally and figuratively, to shed light on the Riley Strain case, packing sonar and amateur equipment to get precise measurements along the Cumberland River. And that is nicely where we're going to start. We're going to start on the Riley Strain case. So let's have a quick look at Riley Strain. Um, have a quick look at who's in chat. Who have we got in by way of mods? We've got Kristen. Hello, Kristen. We've got um, Kristen, <laughs> Kristen, Kristen, Kristen. You might be the only mod in the house at the moment, Kristen. It's a bit early, though, isn't it? And a Saturday as well on a Saturday. I think this is the first time I've ever, ever done a live on a Saturday. Anything to make sure I couldn't buy your iPhone 15, eh? <laughs> I, do, I do like iPhones. I do like Samsungs. I like the look of the new Samsung, but it's, ha it's the software. And with everything, like I've got, a front, I've got an Apple Watch on at the minute. Um, I use that because I'm, I'm back training four times a week. I am dieting, cardio every day, and I need a fitness watch that's decent. And sadly, the Apple Watch seems to be the best one at the moment. Unless you want to get ripped off by Garmin, their new one, which is like a thousand pounds. And it's shite. But apart from that, yes, please hit that like button. Smash that like. Smash the like. We've got 97 in. How many likes we got? How many likes we got? Uh, I have to keep remembering which way to do that. 47 likes and 97 people in here. What are you doing, you freeloaders? Come on. Don't worry about money and donating. Just donate your thumb on that button. It's free. Look in freebies. Freebies. Some people have been asking me about merch. Fuck merch. I, I can't be bothered with merch at the minute. It's a pain in the ass, Pain in the backside. But um, we will we'll do something in the future. We'll do something in the future. But anyway, what was I talking about? I was talking about Roddy Strain, wasn't I? Happy Easter. Yes, happy Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. I wish... I could eat um, Easter eggs, but at the moment I am a non-Easter egg eating person. How's my eye? My eye's actually better. Yeah, it's better. I can see. I can see. And um, Superior Dreams is in the house. We've got our second moderator. And Jen. Hello, Jen. Morning, morning, morning. Ball practice for the boys. Ball practice for the boys. Yeah, I think um, Hayden is out with Mrs. Harsh at the moment because he's he broke his glasses. He broke his glasses, so he had to order some new ones, and they are in, so he's gone to have them fitted. So we're going to get... Um, yeah, he's going to have new glasses. Interesting story. Anyway, let's go to here. So we've got Riley Strain's funeral. So tearful mourners gather for Riley Strain's funeral wearing his favourite colour as questions mount over students' suspicious death in Nashville after he was found wearing no pants or boots. And it says family and friends of college student Riley Strain have gathered for his funeral three weeks after his mysterious death. Um, his half-naked body was hauled from the Cumberland River 
in Tennessee on Friday the 14th, on Friday, 14 days after he vanished in Nashville on a night out. An initial autopsy found no signs of foul play, but also none that he drowned. After leaving Luke's Bridge food and drink at 9.30pm on March 22nd. Um, his body was found without the pants or boots he was wearing that night as he drunkenly stumbled around the city alone. And there we have some pictures of um, of Riley with, uh, with mum there, Michelle. Got some shots there from the funeral. Um, a second autopsy commissioned by his family added to the mystery as investigators await toxicology results. I think that would be interesting to see if there is anything other than alcohol in his um in his body. Um yes. Right, what do we got? Mourners arrived for his funeral at Greenlawn Funeral Home East in Springfield, Missouri at 2 p.m. on Friday. Strain was already laid to rest at a local cemetery at a very private ceremony on Friday morning. He was supposed to graduate from the University of Missouri in May, business and financial planning. No doubt he's found his favourite fishing spot in heaven, mourners were told by the funeral director leaving the service. Mourners wore, wore green, as strain often quipped, green makes you look good, starting with when a relative commented on his green outfit. They were asked to do a random act of kindness, listen to Drake the rapper, buy a stranger a fajita, or take a friend fishing as a tribute to him. Strange friend from Kickapoo High School and baseball teammate Joey Cockle recalled how they grew close warming up before games and on the bench. Riley was my friend, my teammate, my day one, and most importantly, my family. I still can't fathom that he's not next to me as I stand here today, he said. Riley was a friend and brother and I will cherish forever. He was always smiling and brightening the game. Very, very sad, isn't it? And there's some pictures, you can see them with their green out of respect of his wishes. Cockle remember the pair eating buffalo wild wings on snow days and their our countless attempts at mastering Spanish. Something that I'm looking to do as we um, are contemplating actually a move. A mo Why do I keep looking at that light? Um, a move to Spain. Um, but one lesson I learned from Riley is to always stay in the present and don't overthink. Be in the moment and everything else will come. He filled the room with joy, he said. I can't put into words how much I miss hearing his voice. Without Riley, I'm lost, but I will know he's always looking over me. In my heart and by my side, I know I will be with you one day. Um, I will strive to be the man you were, and I know I'll make you proud. Cockle was embraced by Strain's mother, Michelle Strain, white-eared, um, when he finished his speech, and they shared a long hug. Mourners then heard Strain's favourite karaoke song, International Harvester, by Craig Morgan. Early in the service, one of his favourite songs, Something in the Orange by Zach Bryant, played and mourners heard details of his life. He heard about his love of hunting, loved to shoot any game animals, and was taught how to skin a pheasant. He unexpectedly had to taxidermy the bird, and he stuffed and the stuffed bird was on display alongside skins from other kills, his bow and gun and green plants and flowers. Strain was also a keen angler, and the only time he ever got up early was to go on a fishing trip. Um, sadly, I'm not a fishing fan myself. Riley's competitive spirit shone through in tennis matches and his budding interest in the discipline of jiu-jitsu. Above all, Riley cherished time with family, creating lasting memories. Mourners were told how Strain was never diagnosed with ADHD but exhibited some signs of the disorder. He liked to have things in their right place and where they were supposed to be, they heard. Strain always knew if his mother has moved something when she was cleaning his room. There's some more pictures there. His father, Chris, and again, Mother Michelle in the middle there. 
Also included in the service were tales of how Strain always carried a case of water in a cooler in the trunk of his car. When he was in school, Strain was the first baseman in a travelling baseball team. A state-level archer and fell in love with tennis in high school. He was also a big fan of the Kansas City Chiefs, NFL and Dallas Mavericks NBA teams as well as his beloved trio of pets, Miles the Golden Doodle, Cooper the Red Healer, and the German Shepherds, Vicar and Vin. Strain was a devoted environmentalist. In lieu of flowers, donations in Riley's honour can be made to the Missouri Department of Conservation. Riley's commitment to service was evident through the prestigious Presidential Medal of Volunteering, earned by dedicating over 500 hours to the wonders of wildlife, mourners were told. This commitment showcased Riley's deep care for the community and the environment, but that didn't stop him eating them. Riley could always eat his way in crab legs, he just loved them. Riley had a passion for good food, from the comfort of his mum's chicken, parmesan, to the zest of fajitas at local favourites like El Rodeo in Boulevard and El Charo in Nixa and took particular pride in grilling a steak to perfection. Uh, Strain's family want answers on why he was missing his trousers, boots and billfold when his body was finally spotted under a rock eight miles downstream at 7.28am last Friday. Unfortunately, the only thing that was found with him, and the police stated in the report, was the watch and the shirt family friend Chris Dingman told News Nation. Ah, so his watch was still on, which is quite interesting because a few people have speculated that potentially he could have been mugged. But if they would have mugged him, would the watch have gone? So was this not a mugging, but could it have been an altercation? Just seems a bit strange, doesn't it? It's a bit strange. Clothes off, watch on. Unfortunately, the only thing found with him was the watch and the shirt. Not a crime drama person by no means, but usually water in the lungs means that, you know, they are alive when they went into the water. So more questions. We hope to get some answers with the toxicology. The family also want answers on why he was missing his trousers, boots and billfold when his body was finally spotted. Um, once again, one more question, Dingman said, but unfortunately the only thing that was found with him, as the police stated in the report, was the watch and the shirt. Everything else was not with him when he was found. So, you know, they've had his funeral and... We are still in this void of what what happened. What happened? Um, you know, was it just this tragic accident? What we all know can happen. You know, we all know that these things can happen. People can get drunk. I think there'll be a question. The tech, the toxicology will be: Did he just have alcohol in his system? Um, there seems to be a few other stories coming out at the moment of people who had gone to these places to drink around this area only had one drink and become seemingly quite intoxicated um so it will be very interesting to learn what the toxicology brings forward you would hope if there was any issues with that we would have already heard but um we shall we shall find out um let's just go into comments quickly um, were his pants and boots found? They could have come off in the water, I guess, but it sounds like someone at the homeless encampment needed clothes. As far as I'm aware, I've heard nothing that says that they've been found. But there have been some people who have come forward and said the likelihood of jeans coming off in the water is highly, highly unlikely. I'd certainly say boots can come off quite easily, especially if they get filled with water. They could come off, but yeah, the 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 jeans, the pants. Um, I don't. I just don't. I don't know. Fabrics, especially things like denim, become sort of very heavy, and if anything, they'd contract. And the the condition of you know of the body in the water for a length of time would lead to bloat, and so if anything, that should be difficult to get them off. And I think it was quite rightly pointed out that. 
genes are quite difficult to remove without any of these other you know any other things just normally at the end of the night when you're trying to get your genes off um it wasn't an apple watch yeah I, I heard something that it was an apple watch of some description yeah um but um yeah but we don't know at this stage we don't know there's a few things we've still got to wait uh, will we ever will we ever know that's the question i think with that but he's not the only one. He's not the only one who had gone missing as we look at the Sebastian Rogers situation, which we've got. Let me just go, jump up to here. We've got two main parts of the Sebastian Rogers situation. Obviously, the Cajun um, Navy, United Cajun Navy, have um, stopped their search. I don't know whether they've now restarted. But at the time this was um, reported, they'd called off their search after receiving death threats. Well, I don't understand why anybody was... I know there's been some stories flickering about um, like a fake Cajun Navy or something like that, but um, I don't know whether it's connected to that. But it says the non-profit organisa organization helping in the search for Sebastian Rogers in Tennessee called off its search on Friday over safety concerns. Members of the United Cajun Navy reportedly received death threats online and in person, um, with the group announcing it was regrouping. Meanwhile, the 15-year-old's parents met with law enforcement on Thursday as the search for him nears five weeks. The 15-year-old's father said he could not discuss with reporters what the meeting was about, but insisted that he still has hope that his son is out there somewhere. Now I saw I saw this interview with Dad, and it would appear there's a few things that have come up in that discussion. Obviously, he's found out that CPS had been involved in Sebastian, and um, that was the first he knew. And he was quite frustrated about the situation because he's like he's right in saying, "Look, I, I am a biological father of Sebastian, yet I find out about this um, this." situation apparently he found out via a podcast so it weren't even this um this meeting where he initially heard about it i'm guessing they discussed that within the meeting but he seems to have come out of that meeting with a bit of positivity he's he feels that there is still a chance that um sebastian is still alive um i know that there'll be many people who who are not so um, positive in their thoughts because of the amount of time that has gone. But one thing I will say is, you know, Sebastian's autistic. I see a lot of people wrongfully kind of feeling that because of his autism that he's more likely to get into difficulties. And I feel that that's a little bit mm, wrong. Let's just say wrong. Um, you know, he's got autism, but but he's <laughs> people with autism are very, very capable of doing what he could have potentially done if in the event that he has run away. Look, CPS has been involved in his life. Was he unhappy at home and did he just make a decision to up sticks and leave off of his own back? Because I, I feel that people need to don't misunderstand you know mis underestimate him don't underestimate him you know he may have autism but autism can make him very focused on what his goal is if his goal is to get away from home without people finding out where he is then he is going to be incredibly capable of doing such a thing and you know don't don't feel that his autism is is potentially something that's going to hold him back because it could, in fact, be the, the thing that makes him a lot more able to to disappear without without trace. But um, there we go. There we go. We At the moment, his father has done this interview. He None of them have been cleared. He has come out and said none of them have been cleared, but it is an ongoing investigation. So there's he also turned around and said there seems to be nothing brought forward that would link them to anything nefarious. Um, he was asked to comment on, you know, stepdad and mum and whether he felt that they had done anything. And he quite, 
he just he doesn't know. He's, he's he seems to be straight, um, as straight as an arrow. Basically, just saying we don't know. I'm not I'm not doing the investigation. They're doing the investigation, and we don't know anything. We're speaking to them, but they are doing what they need to do. But he seems to be quite positive in his thoughts that Sebastian could still be out there somewhere playing video games perhaps with a friend um, and then we've got a, another article which seems to be the last one which was this one where, where Sebastian Rogers' mum defends leaving town during search for missing autistic son my husband has to go back to work and my son could be anywhere Missing Tennessee teen Sebastian Rogers' mum has defended leaving town while the search for autistic son is ongoing as he could be anywhere. Katie Proudfoot revealed she will be leaving Hendersonville accompanying her husband Chris as he goes back to work in Memphis. However, a frantic search is still ongoing for missing Sebastian 15 who vanished from the couple's home a month ago. It's a month. Proudfoot told broadcaster... Nancy Disgrace admitted she is absolutely concerned about leaving, but that she does not know when she will return. My son could be anywhere, and we're looking everywhere and anywhere, she said. Um, so, yeah, look, obviously the the downside is life does go on. You know, it doesn't halt. Um, it would be nice if it did, but if you've got um, financial commitments, if you've got anything like that, but... Um, I don't know. It's it's a it's a difficult one. Uh, maybe they're not in the position where they can walk away from commitments they have, whether they be work or financial commitments. But the one thing that I will say that I wish I could see more from them that I haven't seen as such, and that is them going on to like like media, putting their face in front of the camera, and actually addressing Sebastian himself. You know, saying you know. Sebastian, you don't need to tell us where you are. Um, we just want to know that you're safe. You know, just reach out to us. Let us know you're safe. Let us know you're okay. And I've I've not really seen any of that. Um, maybe maybe other people have or feel that what they've done is enough. I ju I just don't know. I expect the exes to come out of the woodwork and spill the beans on Mister Chris. Yeah, jury's still out on parents. Yeah, it's the same with me. Just the jury is still out. Sadly, we um, you know, we're in this position, aren't we, where we've seen this happen time and time again. This sadly is extremely, extremely reminiscent of the Summer Wells case. Albeit the parents are not quite on um Don and Candace's level. Um, but the the nature of this of what happened, um, it does seem to be very um, very Summer Wells esque. You could say even even Michael Vaughan in his vanishing without a trace. But yeah, so we don't know where he is either. Um, you know, we've got the Riley Strain situation that you know he's been found, but we don't know how he ended up in the river or what's going on around that. And then we've got the Sebastian case where he is still missing and there is no, there's nothing, nothing whatsoever. Um, they've said about the lights and apparently they're saying that this was some rubbish truck that was getting rid of um, rubbish in the area and that's kind of been um, boo-pooed as, as false information. But um, what have we got in comments? I'll nip into comments and have a look. Heading to Nashville tomorrow already. Yes, we've, um, we saw that, Matt. That'd be nice to hear back from you after you've been. Um, but that is it. What else we got? X did come out of the woodwork. See T Rev. I don't really watch T Rev, sadly. I don't get time to watch anyone, really. Um, obviously, I will just touch on the, the, the drama between myself and Jules. Um, there is there is nothing going on by way of drama that has come to a an abrupt conclusion. Um, it would appear that Jules has gone through some stuff. I don't know all the details of it, but actually, her ex partner had reached out to me via email and um, had tried to 
it seems that he was trying to leverage the fact that we'd had a fallen out to try and get me to perhaps attack Jules online. So I just forwarded Jules the emails and um, that put that to bed. But yes, there is no ongoing issues between myself and Jules. It is what it is. It's done. Done and dusted. I wonder if they're covering for each other, but why? She works for security installation company, yet has no cameras. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I would never leave town with a child missing. And I know there's, that's exactly right. I, do, I, I know I wouldn't. The downside is I do, we cannot, I suppose, speak upon the the you know the people who have commitments and what their commitments look like i guess i'm trying to be a little bit less harsh this time round um it's very easy to become incredibly frustrated with parents when their child goes missing and i don't feel that missing children cases like this will ever change until there is more onus put on the parents um you know, we've seen some horrendous cases and some cases that just don't even seem to be moving in a direction of getting anywhere. Look at, again, the aforementioned Summer Wells case. What the fuck is going on with that case? What Are they going to charge anyone? Are they going to do anything in that case? Or is that just going to disappear now? The Oakley Carlson situation. Yes, her parents are inside for, you know on other charges, but nothing to do with Oakley. And it would appear that they've done something to her. The Harmony Montgomery case, that's near enough identical. And look how long it took to do something in that case. But what do we got? What do we got? Someone said, I saw... Harsh, please do watch the story of the ex of Chris Proudfoot. I will look some stuff up. It's, a bit, it's been a bit difficult the last few hours... I've had some other stuff to do. Um, let's have a look. She said on Nacy Gray, Sebastian knew the code for the door, but no security system. Like, like I say, there's been there's certainly been some very strange things said, but um, but yes, yeah, um, I'm just gonna keep watching for now. If I need to um come out all guns blazing, then um then you know I will. But um, hi, J&J &J Logistics. Hi, all the people coming in. I just I don't try and keep this that long. We're not going to stay about for much longer. It was just to update on those two um, cases and touch base with you guys. Say happy Easter. Um, and, yeah, hope that you do have a good Easter. I hope you do have a good Easter. Oh, like I say, I can't really eat no eggs, but I don't know. Can we do a get healthy challenge? Um, I suppose if enough people wanted to do it, um, I could run a um, a segment. Because, again, I've lost a stone and a half. I think there's, is there 16 pounds and a stone? I don't know. In, like, in a month and a half. So a stone and a half in a month and a half. That's what I've, lo that's what I've less lost. Lost. And the ability to talk, apparently. But um, do like a do like a healthy side running videos. But no, happy Easter, everyone! This is happy Easter. Like I say, just a short live, just to touch base on those. Um, let's have a quick look on here to see if we've got any other docs available to look at Idaho. Um. Is that going to bring that up? It's not going to let me bring that up, is it? Idaho. Oh, that's because I didn't spell it right. Idaho. Here we go. Idaho. See if we've got any new documents. Let's flish this up. Da -da -da -da. Skylar weighed me. That was the guy, the shootout at the hospital, and that was the person who was with him. Da -da 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 -da. Tia J. Garcia, arraignment minutes here and criminal complaint. It's a new one. Who's Tia J. Garcia? Who is this? In the. 
personally appeared before me. Whitney A. Faulkner, deputy, blah, 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 being first duly sworn complaint, say that Tia J. Garcia on or between the 17th and the 21st day of March 2024, County of Ada and elsewhere within the state of Idaho, did commit the crimes aiding and abetting escape of a felony. Ah, oh, this is the person who was involved in the Scott Lamede situation. Yes. So that's the other person involved. So all of them three is the that situation. Um, da -da -da -da. My George and Kayla, we know that that's now come to a conclusion. Judgment of conviction finally came up. Defendant Majorge and Alan Kayla personally appeared for sentencing on March 25th, 2024, represented by Christopher David Schwartz. Um, blah, 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 blah. blah. Murder judgment is entered. Judgment of conviction. Defendant is sentenced pursuant to blah, blah, blah. Um, murder in the second degree. Fixed, minimum fixed and determinate period of custody of life. There we go. A wave because the person is indignant, indigent and unable to pay such fee. For court costs. Could you imagine that? It's like, fuck off, I'm paying anything. I'm stuck in here forever. What else have we got? What else have we got? Let's just go back. Um, Idaho 4, see if we've got anything that has snapped up in the last few hours. Look at this. This is a an abundance, isn't it? The 15th supplemental request for discovery. <laughs> Fucking hell. What a joke, isn't it? Please take notice that the undersigned pursuant to Rule, 6, Rule 16 of the Idaho Criminal Rules, the 4th, 5th, 6th, 8th and 14th Amendments, and um, blah, blah, blah. Defendant's 15 supplemental request for discovery. Evidence of materials outlined in Exhibit N. Exhibit N relates to the sealed IgG information will not be attached to this pleading. Defence counsel will hand deliver a copy of Exhibit N to Bill Thompson and or Ashley Jennings on the 28th of the 3rd. And will provide a copy to Judge Judge on the 4th of the 4th. So a 15th supplemental request for discovery. Nice one. I wonder if we'll get into the 20s on that, no doubt. Uh, there we go, 15. So I shall now love you and leave you. I'll do a shorter video just to summarise this live later for those who don't do lives. But uh, once again, I hope you all have a fantastic Easter. Thank you for those of you who joined me. Thank you to the mods who stopped by as well. And like I said, I do hope that you all have a fantastic Easter. Probably give you the day off tomorrow because it's Easter Sunday. Unless something crazy happens, then we'll um then I'll either jump on live or I'll do a video to cover that. But if nothing exciting happens, well I'll give you the day off and I'll catch you all on Bank Holiday Monday. And we'll do um we'll do a live again. I'll catch you all then. Take care.